This week, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio announced a new initiative to have mental health workers dispatched as first responders for some calls involving mental health emergencies. It's one bit of reform in a year many voters are looking for more. Exit polls show much of the turnout among Joe Biden voters was influenced by concerns about police and racism. And joining us is Bloomberg City Lab reporter Sarah Holder, who's been monitoring urban politics in the U.S. Sarah, thank you for joining us. And to start us off this year, we saw protests over police and our justice system. Did last week's elections result in any kind of reform anywhere? Thanks so much for having me. Um, so yeah, I mean, what we were seeing in the lead up to this November election were that a lot of the protests that had been going on all throughout the summer were translated into policy proposals at the ballot measure level. So voters were asked to weigh in from everything from strengthening police oversight boards to reallocating resources. Um, a lot of the um, proposals that were put on the ballot or approved for the ballot after um, the killing of George Floyd and the protests that followed um, did end up passing. Um, some of them include in Portland, where we saw, you know, more than 100 days of nightly protests, um, voters, 80 uh, percent of voters voted to strengthen and create a new uh, oversight board over the police that could actually discipline police officers who were found to have committed misconduct. Um, Philadelphia strengthened its police oversight board as well. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, which didn't have, um, you know, a, a, an oversight body to reform, created a new one. Um, Akron, Ohio, uh, voters uh, chose to let the public see um, body camera recordings in incidents where use of force or, or death um, resulted from a police encounter. Um, and then you also saw, you know, the the concept of defunding the police wasn't necessarily explicitly on the ballot anywhere. Um, but in L.A., there was a measure to uh, reallocate 10 percent of county unrestricted funds into alternatives to incarceration and programs that helped uh, communities of color. And, and those funds could not be used on things like the sheriff's office. I um, mean, we saw that pass as well. Um, and, you know, in San Francisco, um, um, there's a, a minimum number of police officers that had been in the city charter and voters chose to reduce that minimum, um, something that, while, you know, potentially symbolic, does have the opportunity, leave the opportunity for policymakers to, you know, reallocate resources, um, really assess how many police officers are needed. Um, and it's something that police, uh, the police department and policymakers were both um, supportive of. Well, that's a whole new level of transparency in many places that have seen such problems over the years. But I wonder, though, it was questioned whether a policy of police reform would help Democrats in the long run. Has this platform helped get voters to the polls this time around? Do you think that was one of the uh, things that helped voters come to the polls? Yeah, I mean, my colleague Brandon Mock um, just wrote a great piece on this topic, so arguing that a lot of the energy of the Black Lives Matter protests that occurred um, post George Floyd's death was really harnessed into this record turnout that we saw in cities across the country, um, especially from black voters, you know, who have been credited with um, helping Biden uh, win victory in places like Milwaukee, Detroit, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Pittsburgh. Um, all all those places are places where black turnout was really critical. Um, and you know, Brenton spoke with activists on the ground there who said that a lot of people were inspired to turn out um, after, you know, concerns about police brutality, racism, um, and, and after getting out on the streets in these protests. Um, you know, the NAACP and other um, Black-led organizations uh, got a lot of more donations after these protests as well. Um, and, you know, a lot of a few Democratic lawmakers were concerned that the rhetoric of defund or abolish the police would, you know, deter some voters. Um, and, you know, polling is is certainly mixed on 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 some of those uh, slogans themselves. But, you know, on the ground, um, as I said, a lot of the the energy um, behind these rallying cries was translated into um, people actually, you know, showing up at the ballot box in, in record, mm -hmm. record historic numbers. Very quick question for you. Tell us why mental health workers are a priority at police reform in major cities. Yeah, I mean, this is something that police and lawmakers and activists often agree on. Um, you know, police have been asked to do so many things from, you know, dealing with violent crime or property crime, but also just, you know, helping people in mental health crises or, you know, um, dealing with concerns about unhoused folks. Um, and so, 
part of the push to reform the police is actually taking some of these tasks off their plate. So um, replacing them with social workers or mental health professionals who can really de-escalate situations um, that deal with, again, substance abuse or, mm -hmm. or mental health issues so that, you know, someone with a gun doesn't need to show up uh, yeah. to help these people out. Okay. Um, and the police can have more time to spend on other things. Sarah Holder, thank you so much for explaining that to us. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.